Bullying in school and humiliation in childhood leave a much deeper imprint on the brain than most people realize. For a child, the peer group is the first social world. When that world responds with constant belittling or disbelief in their worth, the amygdala encodes it as a chronic threat. The prefrontal cortex is forced to operate under constant tension, either learning to suppress emotions or amplifying anger responses. Over time, these patterns become ingrained any criticism or rejection in adulthood is perceived as an attack. When this is compounded by a domineering mother, a source of control without warmth in the closest circle, the child experiences a double sense of helplessness. On one side, they can't defend themselves from external pressure by peers. On the other, they don't receive the unconditional support that should come from home. The brain adapts by surviving through fantasies of control, revenge, and the restoration of justice. As a profiler, I've seen this combination far too often in real cases. Many of those we studied shared the same childhood story, peer humiliation, maternal coldness, and the lack of belief in their potential. Their brains preserved this early imprint, which over time transformed into fuel for extreme actions. It's not an excuse, but an explanation. A child deprived of support and respect often grows up with an inner compulsion to prove their significance to the world at any cost. That's why it's so important to unlock the potential of every child from the earliest years and approach education in a unique way. This is why I connect with the vision of World of Geniuses, whose education model is set to launch in 2030. Their Quantum G test, already in beta, helps identify a child's zone of genius and guide their development so that their strengths emerge early. It gives me hope that issues like bullying and its life lifelong scars can be minimized and the world will see not broken lives but a generation of geniuses.